All right, so welcome, welcome up to the stage. Well, thank you very much. What's your name? My name is Ted Dunning. Okay, Ted, so what, uh, what company are you with and what do you do? I work with uh, MapR, uh, the guy with the red hat. And what, what does MapR do? So what MapR does is provides the leading Hadoop distribution. Uh, we provide advanced technology within Hadoop, uh, within a Hadoop framework, and all of the ecosystem components as well. We are deliverable via AWS as one of the two alternatives, three alternatives, two of ours, uh, on the EMR service. Okay, when you say advanced, let's go into a little bit more detail what that means. Yeah, so with Hadoop, what we have is a very high performance computational platform. And that high performance is achieved by parallelism. But some of the trade-offs that were made in the original implementation cut off a large amount of the traditional computation that was possible. And what we've done is reunite that. We've re-engineered the entire storage platform so that traditional compute and advanced computation can go on together. Okay, now is there a particular type of workload or size of workload that this is optimal for? Bigger is better, that's always true. Uh, interactive is good, we support real time, we support mutable data, and uh, so the interaction of real time and long time is a particular specialty. Now, how does this interplay with like Elastic MapReduce? Is this really an alternative to Elastic MapReduce? It's, it is an alternative if you want it to be, but it's actually integrated into Elastic MapReduce. So when you start an Elastic MapReduce job, you have three options, which is the Amazon standard Apache Hadoop distribution, or M3, which is the low-cost version of MapR, or M5, which is the better and better version. Oh, okay, version. I, I learned something new by interviewing. Excellent, okay. So, um, so folks can get started just by going to the console and, and launching MapR. Um, how do you find kind of, are people able to kind of grasp the concept of the MapReduce paradigm, or does it take some level of education for them to get there? It definitely takes a bit of education. There's tools which make things much easier because they cast it in a familiar paradigm. Things like HBase, which give you persistence. Things like Hive and Pig, which give you familiar query languages. Those allow a bit more familiar introduction. But the idea of running in a scale independent way is a new concept for most implementers. They don't get natively the idea that the implementer wouldn't know how large the cluster would be when it's run. So okay. there's lots of new stuff there. All right, so how's the show going for you so far? It's going very well. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. We came here a bit as a courtesy for being a big partner. Had no idea it would be this big or this successful or have this many people who were sophisticated about big data. Are you going to have time to attend any sessions? Well, I was able to talk at one, but that was about it. Uh, we've been scrambling at the booth trying to talk to all the people who are coming by. It's a bigger Sounds show. Sounds like one of those good problems to have. Excellent problem to have. Okay, Ted, enjoyed really speaking with you. Thanks so much. I enjoyed talking to you.